Hey, what's going on everyone? Jack here from Half Grum. Today, I wanna to talk about the DJI FPV drone that's on the way. We know it's coming. It's kind of one of those horribly kept secrets that just keep coming out of DJI. So we're gonna talk about what we've seen in the pictures. Um, and today's video is not just gonna be me. It's uh, half Chrome, half Drone Skater. So we've got Paul from Drone Skater. Paul's got a pretty awesome YouTube channel talking about drones as well. And he's done some pretty neat stuff, 3D printing a model of this FPV quad. So stay tuned and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about this upcoming drone from both Paul and me. Hello Halfcom community, I'm Paul from dronesgitter.com and in this video me and Jack together will take a look at the newly released DJI FPV photos as well as a hands-on look on my baby. The 3D printed DJI FPV drone to better grasp how big it might be and get an impression on it. If you haven't yet caught on the hype, this is pretty much the first FPV drone from DJI and considering how good the latest FPV camera and goggles from them was, I think that this is going to be quite popular with the FPV guys. Now let's have a look at the photos. Jack? Okay, so from this first photo, you can see that there's kind of like a transparent cover. Now that's kind of neat. Uh, you can kind of see the inner workings of the drone, which is cool, but uh, we also see these six screws means that, hey, we're gonna be able to take this thing apart potentially even do some work on it on our own. That's really kind of a good sign. You know, if you're familiar with FPD quads, a lot of times you gotta fix them because when you crash, you know, things break. The camera itself is well captured in this shot. As you can see the sheer size of it, as well as the square base in the back. In the 3D printed model I made, I haven't added the square behind the camera itself that probably holds the camera sensor and all the processing power. And to me, it looks like any other phantom camera, which is great because the sensor size means that it allows for electronic image stabilization, which is pretty much the only type of stabilization you should get on an FPV drone. So DJI most probably only added this server right here on the right, which serves to turn the camera up and down and all the stabilization is handled electronically. But for that to happen, you require a pretty big sensor in the first place because the stabilization process cuts from the image itself. Okay, so let's talk camera. Uh, all the leaks are saying 4K 60 frames per second. Now that would be really pretty nice. A lot of FPV pilots like to strap on a GoPro that adds weight, uh, but a 4K 60 camera would be pretty awesome. Now it also looks like there's a gimbal on there, maybe a two axis gimbal so we can move it up or down. Uh, we can adjust the angle, maybe it stabilizes in flight. A lot of cool things potentially coming our way. It also looks like there are two sensors in the front. Paul, what do you think? Obstacle avoidance? It could be that it helps for obstacle detection. However, the speeds this is probably going to, it's mainly going to help stop the drone in time, not to crash into anything. What we know for sure is that this is the first time in history we've seen such serious technology on an FPV drone, or at least from what I know. I also expect the drone to have some down phasing sensors at the bottom as we've been used so far from DJI. Now all the DJI drones I've flown so far have GPS and it sounds like this one might have GPS as well. Now GPS on an FPV quad isn't a new thing, but good GPS kind of would be. You know, it just makes the drone a safer uh, option for people. You know, if you're flying, you get disoriented, you hit a return to home button and then the drone will fly back and land. Landing an FPV drone is one of the trickier things to do, uh, especially landing safely, you know, those propellers are spinning fast, batteries mounted on the bottom, you know, this nice wide stance and GPS might make this thing just a little bit safer. Another thing that we should mention, Jack, is that DJI has already added their version 2 FPV goggles on their site. You can find them officially on the English site, but they do have a page for the Chinese language. We don't yet know if the new DJI FPV drone will work with the old DJI goggles, but we really hope so because they're quite expensive. And as you can see in this photo, there is a package you can buy that includes both the drone itself as well as the goggles. And once again, from the top we can see the transparent canopy and what looks like a circular looking fan in the middle of it. Probably just to cool it down. Paul, I'm actually a little disappointed that the new goggles look like the old goggles because if you ask me, the worst part about the DJI goggles are the fit. And uh, I was really kind of hoping that they'd up update that. Seems like some of the internals are better, so that's definitely a bonus. And it does look like we're gonna be able to fly our old stuff with these new goggles. But 
time will tell. Now this thing looks pretty mean and aerodynamic. It does look a little heavy to me. I do like the teardrop shaped arms. Uh, kind of adds a nice little flair. Plus probably has some uh, hidden capabilities that help make it more sturdy or aerodynamic, who knows. You can see in the back, there's a spot where I'm pretty sure the battery is gonna go. And now Paul, like I said before, has 3D printed one of these and he created a cavity for battery. Now creating a 3D model is not easy and I think he's done a pretty awesome job here. I'm excited to see how close this model is to the actual drone when it comes out. Specs are telling us this battery is going to be a 6S battery and that means this thing's going to have some serious power. Uh, capable of hitting 90 miles an hour. That's like 150 kilometers an hour. Pretty awesome. In the other image you can see that the arms look much skinnier from this side as they're more elongated rather than simply fat. That aside, there's also the camera gimbal protection, which I can't tell if it's a temporary throwable plastic or an actual gimbal cover like we've been used with so far in the Mavic lineup. We're still to find out what is at the bottom of the drone here, where it has the DJI logo and something sticks out of it. Jack, if you have any ideas whatsoever, enlighten us. I don't want to speculate too much since we don't really know, we don't have this thing yet, uh, but quick release propellers. Again, really nice idea. Obviously, Mavics and whatnot have them. Most FPV drones, we're gonna have to we screw these things down, and that just you know makes changing a prop slower. Um, and these things, unlike my Mavic, I crash right. So when you crash, you're gonna want to replace your propellers to keep that thing flying nice and smooth. And it does look like we're getting five-inch props, which is pretty much the standard size for an FPV racing or freestyle drone. With these new leaks, I must say I'm pretty excited about the controller itself as we can finally see a very close photo of it as well as the component list in the controller package. It seems to contain a top shell, probably the one on top of the drone, or a spare one. The goggles antenna, the headband, a cable and manuals. Well, the controller itself looks pretty solid and pretty much a combination between the FR Sky X Lite and an Xbox controller. And Jack, if I'm not wrong, you also have one of these. Yeah, I've got a Tyrannus X Lite. Actually, you can see it here in the background. Um, I do really enjoy having that small form factor, that gamepad style remote. Um, I've actually kind of switched to the Radio Master because of the multi protocol, and it's actually a really nice radio. But I'm looking for something small. Um, it's just easier to transport, easier to, uh, you know, kind of manipulate. So, this nice, small, low profile controller really kind of nice. We see there's a C1 button, maybe that's customizable, maybe that's return to home. The sticks look like they're removable, just like some of the uh, sticks on the Mavic remote controls. We see there's some switches on the top, you know, arming and angle mode, things like that. Uh, plus the antenna seems to be folding, which is cool, again, because it makes it a little bit more transportable. I recently got my hands on a Cinewoop called Diaton Taycan, which is really awesome and one of the best in the industry. And this is the type of drone that probably can't be replaced by this FPV drone. That is because this one has ducted props which offer a lot of protection if you want to fly closer to people for example or buildings or whatever. So I would actually feel more secure flying this instead of a very expensive DJI FPV drone. However, this might just be a long range flyer which just isn't made for close encounters. With all this being said, I definitely think the new DJI FPV drone is going to be something awesome and I'm going to look forward to it. However, with the latest DJI releases, I don't think people have that much money investing in another new drone. It depends. I think the price point might be somewhere between a thousand and a thousand and five hundred. So what do you think, Jack? What's your take on the price and everything else about this drone? Price? Wow. Well, so what's this thing gonna cost? I'm guessing it's gonna be about a thousand bucks for an all-in package with the uh, goggles, the remote, and the controller. Probably like 1200 bucks is my guess for the whole deal. I'm hoping it's 999, but we'll see. I guess the goggles are what, 560 we've seen? So $500 there, you know, $300 for the drone, $400 for the drone, gosh, $200 for the remote. I, We'll see, right? Either way, it's not gonna be cheap, uh, but it is nice that it's gonna get some other people into this hobby. Uh, this is kind of a hybrid, I think, of, of what we're kind of used to with an FPV drone. It's gonna get new blood into the hobby, and that is a good thing. I want to thank Paul for taking some time to uh, come up with this idea to talk about this drone. Uh, I think that 3D print is awesome. Uh, actually, one of the first videos Chris and I made that really had some traction was 
we built a 3D model of a spark and people really like that. And that kind of sparked this channel. So uh, I appreciate the uh, 3D modeling, how difficult it can be. We've got links down below to Paul's channel. If you haven't subscribed to it or you haven't seen it before, definitely going to want to check that out. And as always, hey, if you haven't subscribed here, do that too. Uh, there's links down below if you're looking for stuff or if you want to join our Patreon, we'd love to have you. We give away a drone to a Patreon subscriber once a month. And don't forget to tune in to our live streams. We talk drone news and we give stuff away. Hey, thanks for watching, everyone. Good luck and happy flying.